Shanna Kialoha is a spellcaster on a mission, ready to take action and hunt down the High Priestess. The thing is, how on earth is she gonna find her? For the third time in two days, Shanna Kialoha was back in the magic realm, looking for the leader of the Keepers of Nature Coven, Eva Srivastava. Slightly fed up, she teleported straight to the library and complained to Rico about everything. How is she supposed to find this woman when they haven't told her anything important about her? Like which house in Glimmerbrook she lives in, Rico thought it was funny that Shanna assumed Eva lives in Glimmerbrook. She doesn't, she lives in Hanfordon Bagley. There's a massive spellcaster population there. She also firmly reminded Shanna that being a spellcaster meant putting in effort. She can't come and complain whenever she isn't instantly gratified. She knows Shan is more talented than that. And if she thinks this is hard, then she certainly isn't ready to become a part of Ava's coven, let alone any coven. She told her to go to Hanford and look around until she finds Ava's house. She'll know it when she sees it. So, off to Hanford. Shanna went, ready to search for Eva in the most unconventional stilettos ever. She kinda appreciated what Rico said to her. The sage was right. Spellcasting isn't supposed to be easy. She fought with herself tooth and nail in order to accomplish her childhood dream and become the strong virtuoso she was today. Of course, if she wanted to be a part of the coven run by the strongest spellcaster in existence, it wasn't going to be a walk in the park. She was grateful for Rico's friendship, and it not stopping her from holding back the truth Shanna needed to hear. But shit, she still really just needed to hurry and find this bitch. As she looked for Eva's house, she chatted with the wild rabbits prancing around Hanfordon Bagley, practiced her magic, and picked up various plants and frogs to use for potions. She looked high and low, left and right, front and center for a house that felt like Eva's, and nothing had moved her yet. She was sure someone so mysterious would have better taste. And she didn't think Eva had the time to maintain an old cottage or raise livestock. Once she reached the highest point of Henford, she scanned the distance. And that's when she spotted a house hidden in the trees west of the cottage. And it certainly did look like a spillcaster's home. The similar architecture to Glimmerbrook's, the obscene amount of flowers, the little mushroom details sprawled around. She felt it in her bones. This was definitely the house, and she didn't need any more convincing once she saw who was standing outside of it. Eva. Wearing all black. And talking with the wild foxes. Oh my god, and her shoes, Shanna was fangling so hard, but enough with that. She slowly approached Eva, and introduced herself. The first thing Shanna thought to herself, once she looked into Eva Shrivastava's eyes was how beautiful she was. She was ethereal, and of course, she had to tell her, and how she liked her Louboutins, and her hat. Her whole closet was probably fantastic, but then Shanna realized she was blabbering, because she was nervous, and she never gets nervous, but it seemed like Eva appreciated it. Eva said she was outside because she had a feeling someone would stop by today, she must be them. She asked her if she wanted to come inside for tea. Shanna quick to oblige. She sat down on a bar stool in the kitchen as Eva prepared some lavender tea. She grows the lavender herself in her garden. No magic used. She just admitted to Shanna that she's a spellcaster. So casually, how could she sense she was one? Eva handed Shanna the tea, inviting her to talk with her in the dining room. Sitting down at separate ends of the table, Eva raised a question. What is her name and why is she here? Shanna tried to keep her composure as she formally introduced herself. Her name is Shanna Kialoha, and she is a virtuoso spellcaster looking to join a coven. Eva's coven, the Keepers of Nature, is her first and only pick, and she would be honored if she could join. Shanna and Eva basked in a few moments of silence, sipping on their cups of lavender tea, before Eva asked her next question. 
Who is Shanna? Shanna was a bit confused by the question. She just told her her name. Maybe she wanted to know more about her life. So she told her that she's a wife and a stay-at-home mother and a homemaker. And that's when Eva cut her off. Eva didn't ask what Shanna does or what her marital status is. She wants to know who Shanna Kiloha is. Why she thinks she's worthy of joining her coven. The coven her family has built and protected for generations that holds a grand abundance of knowledge and community. Oh. Aha. Okay then. Shanna had to think about it for a moment. And Eva let her. And once she finally felt like she knew who she was, she let it out. Shanna is someone filled with tenderness and drive. An empath and a caregiver. She is someone with lots of love to give to those around her and has spent most of her life doing so. However, Shanna is also someone with a thirst for knowledge. She was intrigued by spellcasting ever since she was a little girl. And she made her dream come true by learning everything there was to learn about the craft. But every day, she still yearns for more. She is someone who craves the history and secrets of the glorious craft she admires with her entire being. And just like she did with becoming a spellcaster, she is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve that. So, that is who Shanna is. Someone who follows her heart and her dreams. Someone who doesn't give up. Someone who is willing to do whatever it takes. Shanna thought her speech sucked. But it seemed to satisfy Eva. She went on to ask Shanna more questions that were actually about spellcasting. How long she'd been one. What inspired her to become one. If she had any other family that were spellcasters. Shanna mentioning her son Sage and daughter Aurora. Before wrapping things up, Eva went ahead and made something clear to Shanna. She doesn't let just anyone into her coven. And though she felt that Shanna would be a perfect addition to the Keepers of Nature, she still needed her to prove herself. She will accept Shanna in into her coven after she completes a task in a place not too far from here. There lies a door created by nature. The door is a portal to another realm. Once she finds the door and enters the portal, she must collect 50 sprites and bring them back to Eva. She has 48 hours to complete this task. It is up to her to use her intuition and her knowledge to find this door. Shanna was extremely confused by Eva's challenge, but she didn't let that show on the emotions of her face. She gracefully accepted Eva's challenge instead, wishing her a good night before heading back home to Evergreen Harbor, trying not to show any signs of panic where Eva could see it. Not much was going on back at home, Aurora was playing and watching more movies, and Dexter got a first taste of what living with his baby mama, respectfully disagree Volkov, would be like. You sure you have what it takes to deal with this buddy? Shanna rushed over to our matriarch, Autumn Kiloha, giving her the biggest dip kiss ever. She was so happy she found Eva. She couldn't contain her excitement, telling her everything there was to tell, and poor Sage was peacefully enjoying his nighttime workout, only to be interrupted by rampaging Aunt Rico charges. I thought you were used to this by now after growing up in Moonwood Mill most of your life. Autumn and Shanna went to their bedroom for the rest of the night to talk all about Eva. Meanwhile, our heir Aurora wasn't feeling too good about herself. Watching all of these new movies was such fun, but at the same time, seeing all these beautiful actresses on her screen made her look at herself differently. She hadn't told this to anyone, but Aurora really hated how she looked. She was so incredibly insecure, especially when standing next to her twin sister, Oasis. She had the blue hair, the heterochromia, the big lips. She was so unique looking, and the other girls and teachers at school tell her that all the time. Where were Aurora's compliments? It's simple. She wouldn't be getting any. Her mom's dress her like a boy. She hated these thrift store clothes. Her red hair is too bright. She hated that she inherited Shannon eye shape and not autumns. She knew she was the ugly duckling of the family, the fugly twin sister. Not to mention Oasis's ability to get along with everybody and her easy temperament. She had so many friends at the Montessori. Aurora didn't have a single one. Her sister really didn't get how lucky she was. How easy she had it. Aurora would kill to swap bodies with her. Unshantum. That doesn't really look like talking about Eva.
Aurora eventually went to bed, but Sage was wide awake on a potion of plentiful needs, spending his night increasing his archery skill. He was sure he was never going to sleep again, now that he'll be able to make these potions. Why sleep when there's so much to do? So many potions and spells to learn and practice. So many new things to try out, like sports. So many places to explore, and homework, or whatever. Holy shit race car Volkov, why are you sneaking up on your nephew? you like that. Yes girl, because it's so smart to stand right in front of Sage's bow and arrow. Ryan Reynolds was surprised to see Sage still awake, but she wasn't going to tell him to go to bed. Since he's also a night owl, or night wolf per se, she figured maybe they could spend some time with each other, and Sage was down with that. She apologized for spooking him earlier. She didn't know if Sage knew much about werewolves, but it wasn't in her control at all. He didn't know shit about werewolves, but he accepted accepted her apology. She then went to ask for werewolf sympathy, and Sage said hell no. Nah. Or, little fucker has no idea that his baby sister is a werewolf. Well, she thought she'd at least give it a shot before she leaves for Sulani tomorrow. As she pushed her nephew on the swings outside, Rabies shot realized how much she was going to miss being around her family. It was good for Jasper to have some time growing up to spend with his cousins. And it was good for Redbone to have Autumn's and Shani's support when she was pregnant with Jasper, but she knew it was her time to go, and finally, let her big sister Autumn and her family have their house to themselves, she'd always appreciate them making room for her, but with her leaving, that meant today was the day, the day she would finally meet with her old lover, Zayden Kibo, face to face, for the first time in ages, the day she'll tell him everything about Dexter and Jasper, the day she'll find out if the soulmate be gone potion she took actually worked.